Mr. Deputy Speaker, the original title for today's debate uh, announced last Thursday was Chaos and Waste at the Department of Work and Pensions, not Performance of the Department of Work and Pensions. For me, uh, the original title is apt. Uh, I wish to emphasise uh, that the staff at the DWP offices are not the targets of my remarks, uh, I think the remarks of people on this side of the House. Um, rather, the blame, I think, lies squarely at the door of this Government. They have pursued policies that have been harsh in intent and in effect, and have failed to provide the desired results too often. Today's motion uh, mentions a fair few of the current catastrophes of policy, administration, oversight and also of structural areas. I agree with the motion and we in Ply Cymru will, will be voting uh, with the Labour Party tonight. But uh, if they are the next government, the Shadow Secretary of State for Work and Pensions is quoted as saying that Labour would be, quote, tougher than the Tories on benefits. Now, some of this may well be the froth of political journalism and uh, taking serious points out of context, uh, not looking at the detail. Uh, but if Labour are the victims of a coarse and vindictive press, they seem to me to be all too willing to embrace that status. Alas, it appears to me for the sake of headlines. But to turn to the motion itself, this Government's policies and its failure uh, to manage the change itself instigated. Even at a cursory glance, uh, this will bring up areas not covered in the motion, uh, beyond uh, the delayed universal credits, beyond the crisis in PIP, uh, beyond the harshness and cost and effectiveness of the bedroom tax, not to mention the benefits cap itself. There are a whole host of government policies that have contributed to the misery uh, that so many vulnerable people suffer. Now, honourable members will uh, need no, remind no reminding of uh, the work of ATSOS and the work capability assessments. We've heard a great deal about it already uh, this afternoon. The seemingly endless cases of people with serious illnesses or even at the very uh, door of death being passed as fits for work. We all have cases and the temptation in a situation like this is to quote the most extreme ones. There are a few, a few extreme cases, but here's one of mine. It's not from the extreme end, but it is just typical, I'm afraid. A man with angina, severe breathing problems, crippling arthritis, waiting for surgery, being passed fits for work. And he is one of many, not on the extreme, but a representative of the many. He was passed uh, through a point system which is clearly still not fit for purpose. And I say still, but will it ever be so? Will it ever be fit for purpose? For my central criticism of the system standing back is that in ticking boxes, in scoring points, the person in front of the assessor just disappears, becomes dehumanised, just a collection of boxes, ticks and points. The system, when I first started uh, representing people uh, to the DHSS, that's over 30 years ago, was far from perfect, and I'm certainly not starry-eyed about it. I can recall having to plead for an extra blanket for someone, arg arguing that the applicant lived in a particularly cold area. Um, I had to contend with the advice from government expert advisers, saying that food in half-empty tins was better left in the can, so uh, the applicant's uh, could not possibly qualify for the luxury of a Tupperware pot. I certainly am not starry-eyed about the old system, but workers built up an expertise. They had some discretion, and uh, they could prioritise, as the honourable gentleman, right honourable gentleman for Birkenhead, uh, referred to earlier on in the points to the Secretary of State, they could apply some basic, simple common sense mm -hmm. that a system based on ticking the boxes denies them. Now, earlier uh, this year, the Welsh Government uh, published the second part of its third and final report on the impact of the UK Government's welfare reform changes on Wales. This shows that uh, Wales' total loss of income as a result of Westminster's plans for social security is to be around £930 million uh, a year by 2015-2016. Out of all the local authorities' areas in Wales, Neath Pot Albert, Plain Gwent and Bertha Tidville are estimated to be the hardest hit by the welfare reforms as analysed. I should note that these last two local authorities are probably the most deprived in Wales and they are being hit uh, the hardest. 
And the third, the first one, Neath Plus Olbers, of course, has a very high level of long-term sickness and disability from its heavy industry. Although the losses will vary widely depending on individual circumstances, the average loss to a working-age adult in these areas is estimated at around £600, uh, compared to £500 as a whole for Wales. The people of Wales are no more than the people of the north-west of England, or the west of England, or elsewhere can afford such losses without major ill effects throughout society. We cannot afford this government, but on the present form, I fear, uh, we will not be able to afford uh, the next one either. Thank you. Thank you.